This is Adjuster TV, Adjusters First. Adjuster TV is brought to you by Kaplik. Learn all about E&O and other insurance for adjusters at cplic.net slash adjuster TV. Okay, should you get an LLC? Is there, is there any benefit to getting an LLC um, as a property independent adjuster, especially as a catastrophe adjuster? I think there, there is um, to a certain degree, um, maybe, and this is what uh, some IA firms told me when I, when I, I did some polling recently, and they basically said, it, in some cases, it makes it easier to pay somehow. I can't remember exactly what they said. I probably should look it up. But anyway, they said it made it a little bit easier to, for tax purposes um, to to pay an LLC versus pay an adjuster. Um, but and that's really all kind of on their side, on the IA firm side. It was easier for them, not necessarily the adjuster. Um, maybe it's easier for the adjuster in that case, um, but I, I want to kind of list out the reasons why you, you would. Somebody would say, well, maybe an LLC is what I should get, and then talk about other ways to, to I think, maybe to get a, a better result or do those things better than getting an LLC. An LLC doesn't fulfill the, those things quite as well as these other options that I'm going to kind of talk about. So LLC, corporate veil, right? So, supposedly, which is very thin, by the way, and any attorney will tell you, that an LLC's corporate veil protection, right? This is the whole point of getting an LLC, supposedly, is it's a limited liability, right, situation, right? Uh, so it's there's some protection from uh, uh, from having your personal assets be taken from you or called into, you know, in a, in a court situation, right? Um, the other thing is, is maybe there's some, some kind of a tax benefit, um, and those are really, uh, honestly. I think the main things, the drawbacks and the cons, and I, the reason why I don't think an LLC is a great option for, for at least for property adjusters. It may be for auto people. I think it's a different story. I think there's go to watch iapath.com. You know, listen to his podcast or watch his videos, and he, he he's everybody's got to get an LLC over there. I, and that's I don't understand it. Um, maybe I should have him on. That's probably a good idea. So, but as, as far as like a, a cap field property independent adjuster. Um, if you're with that corporate veil, if you if you don't have separate accounts for your claims business, if you buy things with your your adjuster, you know Matt's adjusting LLC. If I buy stuff that's not associated with that work, then I've just degraded that that corporate veil protection, that li limited liability piece, because I'm I'm mixing together my personal and this business thing, which pretty much removes that that corporate veil protection, right? Um, <clears throat> no matter what you do, I would strongly encourage you to have a separate separate accounts for your claims business and then their own like personal checking account where you do everything else, right? So I would say I like uh, Mike McCallowick's uh, Profit First. I think it's a great book. Um, and I think you can modify that to, to work for really any situation. I think it can work really well for claims where you have a revenue account, right, where that's the account, you know, the routing number and the account number that you give all your IA firms. Anybody that's going to give you, like, you know, pay you a paycheck or give you money as an adjuster, all that money goes into that account. And then a couple of times a month, you peel off a certain percentage. You say, well, I need a certain percentage to go to tax. So we have a tax, separate tax account, right, where I pay all my taxes out of that account. Maybe I take 17% or 35% or 22% or whatever makes sense, right? You and your CPA and your accountant. Um, every time I, I uh, get paid, a percentage of that money goes into the tax account, right? And then another another account is for operating expense, right? This is for gas. This is for vehicle uh, repairs. This is for hotels. This is for trainings and equipment that you, you know, licenses, CE, all that stuff all comes out of that operating expense account, right? And that gets, uh, when you go to do your taxes, then all you just hand that stuff to your, your accountant, your CPA, and they could probably do your taxes in five minutes if you have have it set up like that. So they're not picking out like, well, we went to went on a family vacation and we did this and I bought a lawnmower and it, you have all that stuff all mixed in with like your CE and your training and your whatever, then it, then it becomes, you're spending more money on your, your tax stuff, right? Because they have to pick through all that stuff or you have to do it and then give that to them. 
If you keep it separated over here, then there's no question, right? And if you're gonna do an LLC, you have to you have to have separate accounts. You absolutely have to have separate accounts. You can't just have your one checking account, right? And then just, well, I got an LLC, I mean, ready to rock and roll. Have separate accounts, right? Because that will keep your corporate veil intact, right? The other thing is, um, is that the limited liability piece, like that protection, um, I don't think that that's something that's really comes up in it's situations where you're going to be like, find yourself getting sued or getting a bill for some, some damage that you've caused at a house or something like that. They're not going to come after your car or your house or your checking account or your, you know, your fancy lawnmower or whatever it is, right? You're going to get a bill for a monetary amount because your ladder fell off the slid off the side of the the, the roof where it was set up and smashed up the insured's car or hit them right and they got they got knocked out they have a concussion and they get had to have 214 stitches across the side of their head because your ladder fell over and hit them. You're going to pay for their medical bills, right? Um, general liability insurance covers you for that stuff, right? And it's an annual thing. And there's a deductible or whatever, but it's it's uh, you just it's just like any other insurance. I think, and this is really kind of like the spoiler alert here, I think that the answer to the things that people think that an LLC is gonna be good for are much better handled by um, insurance. Getting your own insurance as an adjuster. Um, you may still get an LLC if you want to, if that, if that makes sense to you, you and your CPA. Um, you're like, yep, this is the way we wanna go, or you, you've watched a million videos on YouTube and, and you know better than I do, which probably you do. Um, but I think for the protections that the LLC promises, you really should be looking at general liability insurance for if you are causing damage or breaking something or hurting somebody at an insurance house or whatever, right? And then uh, for the things that really are gonna be like the, the scary thing, well, they're gonna come up, you know, if I get called into court on a claim, they're gonna take my house, right? I think that's doubtful to begin with, but, you may get hit with some kind of a big bill. Um, errors and emissions insurance covers you for that, for, for claims where they say you were negligent in the claims process somehow, and we actually wrote this much, and we are gonna penalize you X number of dollars, right? Errors and emissions insurance is designed specifically for that. So the combination of having general liability insurance and errors and emissions insurance, I think, to my knowledge understanding, really kind of negates the, the whole point of having an LLC if you think that an LLC is gonna provide those protections, I don't think it's gonna do as good as, as these do. Um, longstanding partner with Adjuster TV is uh, Kaplik, which is cplic.net slash Adjuster TV. I've got a full guide there, a full downloadable guide for um, all the different kinds of insurance that adjusters probably should have, like commercial auto insurance, right? So you have a different policy, call your State Farm or whoever, is, whoever it is you have your insurance through and say, hey, um, I'm using my car for work a bunch. Um, I need a slightly different policy and they will help you with that. So there's stuff like that in there as, w as, as well as general liability and errors and emissions insurance, um, you know. If you're brand new and you haven't done claims yet and you haven't, this isn't, you haven't decided this is like your full on career yet, um, it'll be a challenge to get E&O and general liability insurance through Kaplik because they really want you to have an established work history that you are, because they only do E and O and general liability for the insurance industry only, right? They don't do it for any, the Uber drivers. They don't do it for anybody else. Only the insurance industry. And so they want you to be an insurance pro before they will sell you a policy. Um, so to start, you don't need to get errors and emissions insurance because as a brand new person, especially with the bigger, the big firms and the major, the major who run claims for the major carriers they're going to have some kind of errors and emissions insurance that will cover you. Um, they may charge you for it. They may charge you $5 per claim for, you know, if you don't have your own E&O. Um, I think if you're a brand new person the first year, it's going to be a wash because E&O you know, insurance and general liability are not really that expensive to have. Um, once you get through that first year and you're like, man, I'm all in on this. I love doing claims or whatever. Then I would reach out to Kaplik and say, hey, um, I'm, you know, I did uh, two hurricanes last year and a hailstorm, and you know, I'm excited about this year. And I just actually got deployed. They're sending me to Minneapolis for whatever, um, and I and I think I need to get my own errors and emissions insurance, and then to have a conversation starting from that point instead of being like, well, I just got my license and I haven't done any claims yet, so I'm not sure. They're probably going to say no, right? There may be exceptions, certainly, but but I think that uh, Kaplik will say no. And again, you're still covered for errors and emissions under 
the IA firms may have some kind of a blanket policy for you. Um, in the long run, this is going to be far less expensive um, to have your own E&O insurance. Also, you get to pick it, right? Um, instead of them, your IA firm may or may not use um, a company. They may have shop on price, right? For a big, huge group plan that doesn't have that great of coverage. Whereas Kaplik has really pretty outstanding coverage, right? So should you get an LLC? If you're looking, if you're trying to do it because you're th- you're worried that they're going to take your truck and your your house, if you get you know deposed into to, or s- called in as part of a lawsuit on a claim, then I don't think it's very good. Um, you need you know, you know insurance, and you're only going to have it most likely. Um, the other thing is with the LLC is it's state by state, right? So if you live in North Dakota, then you get your LLC. You have to get your LLC in North Dakota, and it only counts there. The IRS does not recognize LLCs, right? So at the, at the federal level, so they don't care about that. It's completely invisible to the IRS. So they're gonna, you're going to get taxed exactly the same. Um, so then, if you want to work in other states, and you got to do like a foreign, I don't know, there's a whole thing with it. it. Honestly, I don't know that it's really worth getting, at least as far as the protections that it supposedly promises. I think you can get a much more robust protection over here with e and and GL insurance versus getting an LLC. Um, As you go forward, maybe it makes sense, right? This is, again, something that you talk about with your your tax person. Um, But I think to start as an independent adjuster, a property adjuster, you don't need to pay for either one of these things. Um, Definitely don't need to get an LLC, and you probably can't get you uh, know, from Kaplik anyway, you probably get it from Hiscox, which is another uh, company that sells a lot of different kinds of insurance and liability insurance. But again, they sell it to photographers and Uber drivers and, you know, people with their own businesses and things like that. And um, so they'll sell you kind of a generic thing, whereas Kaplik is specific to the insurance industry. Did you know that this is just a clip of a much longer video? To watch the whole show and for a chance to have your questions answered by me, become a member at AdjusterTVPlus.com.